Hey everyone, welcome back. It's day seven today of the 30 Day Profit Challenge, and I'm really excited for you to be here today. So thanks for joining me. Today, we're gonna sum up the last few days that we've been talking about this total product margin tree. And in today, I'm gonna to recap for you with what we call the total product margin formula. And with that, what we'll do is we'll kind of review all the math, all the equations, all the sort of things that we've been adding up for the last couple of days so that you can understand how do these all tie together to create the total product margin for your business. So let's dive into it. Sorry about that, technical difficulties. Now we got the screen share going. All right, so total product margin formula, day seven. So as I mentioned, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna sum up all the different pieces and parts that we've been doing in the total product margin formula so that you can understand how to, all the how to tie together all these calculations and all the math into the formula. So, you know, just to recap really quickly, we've been using our order example on the far right hand side here. So we had an order that started off at $120. We took away a discount of $20 to arrive at $100 product revenue. Then from there, we added in some taxes, shipping to get to a gross revenue number. Now, really, we've only been using the product revenue number in this margin tree to understand what it, how it relates to the average unit revenue. So again, we took the sales revenue at the top of a million dollars. Then we looked at that versus your orders of $4,000. If you go a million over 4,000, you get your average order value of 250. Then from there, we looked at the next level down to get your units, units per order. So we took your 10,000 units sold, divided that over your 4,000 orders to arrive at 2.5 units per order. Another similar way you could look at it is if you win your 250 average order value divided by your $100 average unit revenue to get the 2.5 at the same value. Now, when we talked about an average unit revenue, we also wanted to look at what the average cost per goods sold would be of that particular unit so that you could go 100 minus 25 to end up with your average product margin that we talked about last time in at $70, $75, sorry. So then from there, what we, we added into the product margin formula here is basically what you would have is if you took your unit sold, multiply that by your total cost of goods sold or your average cost of goods sold, to arrive at a total figure of $250,000. And then that way, the math works where if you took a million dollars in sales revenue, subtracted your $250,000 in total of the cost of goods sold, you'd arrive at that total product margin formula. So in summary, this is kind of another way to look at the total product margin formula if you're into the math and into all the equations. So for Thursday, we talked a bit the, about the gross margin versus gross profit. And so to sum it up, total product margin could equal your sales revenue minus your cost of goods sold. Then from the day, next day, we looked at the average order value and how that can be translated is looking at your sales revenue divided by the orders or orders multiply by average order value, depending on which way you're looking at it. Then we looked at your units per order and we took that and looked at your total units quantity over top of the orders to get arrive at a units per order number for you. And then finally, we looked at the average product margin. So we looked at average unit revenue, subtracted that from that to average goods, average cost of goods sold to arrive at your average product margin. So now there may be a, another way that you want to visualize all this. And so what I've created is a bonus, bonus download for you called the total product margin formula. And what this is, is a Google worksheet that'll allow you to go in and plug in your own numbers because you know you may not be at the same stage with this example. You may be at $10 million already. You may be at $100,000. You may be just getting started. Wherever you're at, what this worksheet will hopefully help you do is figure out, well, where does your business sit in terms of the overall grand scheme of things? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip over to that worksheet here and showcase how the product margin formula works. So let me just adjust my screen share here. And I'll go over to the product margin formula worksheet. And so now what all this is, is a Google worksheet. And this is a free bonus download that I've created for you to download to your own machine and use in your own business. How to use it is if you wanna go up here to the top file menu and just make a copy, that'd be greatly appreciated because obviously this is something public that I'm sharing with everyone out there. And so if you wanna have your own worksheet and you don't want anyone else to look at it, you probably wanna make a copy of it instead of plugging in your own values. 
And don't worry, I set it as view only only, so you probably couldn't update it and save it anyways. So long story short, do take a moment to take the file, make a copy so that you have your own version of this product, total product margin formula to use on your own. So just to quickly orientate yourself to this worksheet, any of the values that you see as sort of shaded in yellow are assumption values that you would create for yourself. And so in this scenario, what you would wanna do is enter in your original orders. So if it was 4,000, maybe it was 2,000, whatever the number might be, make sure that you add those numbers into your uh, product margin formula to start, as well as enter in your sales revenue that you're currently sitting at. And you know, I would probably recommend using the last 12 months or the last year of data. Maybe that's 2019 for you. Maybe it's the last four quarters. Whatever the case might be, using annual figures is probably the best way to think about this. Um, you could use your lifetime as well of your business, but I would recommend probably the best scenario is probably looking at an annual rolling 12 basis. So putting your sales revenue, and then again, you can put in your average order value. Maybe it's only $200 instead of $1,000 or 250. Maybe it is $1,000. Whatever that case may be, you can put in your average, average revenue and order value. Then from there, what you can do is in order to take a look at what the increase in average order value is, I've already gone ahead and put in a 10% lift. Now, 10% may be a lot for you, maybe it's not enough. In either case, what you can do is you can change this to be maybe 5%, or maybe it's 20%, maybe it's 10. Whatever that value you can do, or whatever the value you think is most appropriate for your business, you can see that as I change the numbers, it's gonna change the values in this equation for you as well. So similarly, if we looked at the step two we looked at with increasing your units per order, again, putting your units quantity, again, this could be 10,000, could be 5,000, whatever that number might be. Let's put it in here, just back to the 10,000. And then from there, your units per order would stay as, you know, you can put in the 2.5 as a calculation, or if you want, maybe it's something else, maybe it was three, but whatever the case may be, again, similarly over here, you can change the add input value from five, maybe it's 5%, maybe it's 20%. Again, whatever the value might be, you can see that in your desired state column, those values are changing as we go down the worksheet. And so similarly, you can do the same for your increase in average order value, or average product margin, sorry, putting in your $100 for the unit price, your 25 for your cost of goods sold, and then $75 is what net out is your average product margin. Again, plug in the values that you see fit for your equation. And so all of these columns here represent your current state. And you can see at the bottom, I've done a calculation here for you that looks at your sales revenue minus your cost of goods sold to end up with your total product margin or product profit, depending on how you wanna look at it. Then similarly in the second column, it's got the desired state. And what the desired state is doing is multiplying your current state by that input value that's coming in off the right-hand side and then showcasing how that's a plus or minus increase or decrease with the color coding indicating green being a positive indicator or positive lift or increase, red being a negative indicator or negative increase or decrease. Now, in some cases that could be just reflected as a percentage or it could be reflected as a, uh, a plus or minus. So long story short, this is meant to help drive you to showcase how you can increase or decrease your overall total project margin formula. And then the nice little handy thing is if you flip over to the other tabs, this gives you a printable, downloadable worksheet that you could print off your current state next to your desired state. And you know what I would recommend you do is print the both off, put them up on the wall side by side, plaster them over your office, share them with your colleagues or your teammates, and use this as a way to help motivate and inspire your team and use it to track to see how you're progressing towards your goals of that desired versus current state. So that, in a nutshell, is the total product margin formula. So I really appreciate you hope this lesson. I hope this bonus download is something that you can use in your own business to help calculate your own total product margin formula. But again, thanks for watching. And I ask that you, you know, be present today, connect with others and make an impact in someone else's life today. Thanks for watching and have a great day.